Okay. All right. So thank you everyone for coming. Uh, what we want to do today is uh, do an update on uh, where we at when it comes to working with databases in R. Uh, so last year, uh, we introduced some concepts of how we see the world when it comes to uh, being able to access remote data and be able to get, uh, get results and analysis done um, in, in the best possible way uh, for uh, an R user to do. And the idea there is, as I have here in overview, is to be able to um, Send and push all the computation back to uh, to the database, and then just bring back the results. Right? If you think, uh, in, if we think in terms of uh, what the SQL uh, database does, is it has the data and it also has a SQL engine, and that SQL engine does most of the stuff that we do in uh, local R today, right? So we group data, we filter data, we select data, and all that stuff can be done in the database. So um, we introduced those concepts of doing that, uh, and we've been talking through, um, to, through different conferences and e even to the class. Uh, so what I wanted to do today is um, kind of give an update or, or, and for uh, you to know where more resources are. Uh, starting with this one. So uh, db.rstudio.com, uh, if you work with databases in R, that, uh, I would absolutely suggest that you uh, bookmark this in your, um, in your browser. Um, we've been, uh, the one that we had last year uh, had uh, all the, the, the basic stuff, such as uh, the packages that we're gonna use, as well as uh, the different backends that you can connect to and how you can do that through um, uh, ODBC. Uh, and uh, the DBI package. Um, ever since then, uh, we have added more best practice articles, and I think this is one of the major things that uh, uh, you can take from this, uh, this talk, is like, um, this would be a good uh, place to start if you have questions about specific things of how to do. Because what's gonna happen is that we're gonna start where, with simpler exercises and then we're gonna get more complex, and there may be some issues getting to that, through that complexity. Um, so it has, uh, the site has a search bar that you can use to be able to perform some, like if you're looking for schema information, how to work with schemas, it's already, uh, shows you all the, the, the results and you can easily go to that um, um, article. Another thing that uh, we have here, and it's, uh, as far as, as you were reading through the introduction for this uh, talk uh, about techniques, um, one of the things we've seen that customers uh, some, sometimes struggle with is actually publishing uh, the, uh, the content, right, from a shiny app that you have local that you wanted to run now on, on something like our Studio Connect, for example, or Shiny uh, Server Pro, or something like that. Um, how do you transfer the credentials? How do you handle the security? Uh, we have uh, actually three uh, articles that handle security in here. So I would, uh, I would recommend that if you are getting to that point, just like what uh, Joe was talking about, you know, as you go into production and try to scale it up, this is some, this is uh, oftentimes becomes, becomes a challenge and we have some resources here. Another resources is, uh, resource, excuse me, is uh, the RStudio community. Um, there's a special tag for databases, so if you uh, have questions about how to do certain things with databases uh, and R, uh, you can post it here. Uh, also, as you continue to learn and get better at it, um, you're more than welcome to uh, post answers because we appreciate how the community comes together uh, and um, help, help each other out, uh, especially, and especially as we're learning uh, how, what, what things we can do better uh, to improve um, the, these interfaces that we have been working on. So um, those are the like, two resources, that, the latest that we have. Um, the other thing is, I'm gonna take a chance here, and I want to, I'm gonna go real quick through. Uh, so the, the script that uh, Jonathan showed, I had a little demo for that, but now after seeing his super cool demo, I'm very self-conscious about it, so you can see it there, and you just saw it earlier. So the next thing is our Studio Connect. Uh, I'm sorry about the flickering, but it, I, I don't have a way to show this in uh, live right now. Um, in our Studio Connect, uh, now you're able to uh, set environment variables, and those environment variables are um, encrypted, 
both in disk and also in the memory. So if you have a, a situation where you need to uh, have the, the, the credentials that that Shiny app is using um, in the pub published version, then you can leverage that and connect. So that's another uh, new one that uh, we actually are start recommending a lot based whenever there's certain uh, challenges to using something like a DSN or, um, or something like Kerberos, for example. Also, we've seen, uh, as far as in, in a year's time, how uh, folks have, that have adopted uh, using uh, dplyr uh, with uh, databases and let it do the translation for you, how it, they start wrapping uh, these uh, more complex stuff inside functions, and they start using things like, um, uh, things like per, for example, and rlang. And so I'm very excited about that because um, I was expecting us to get to this point um, a little bit longer time frame than, than, than where we are now. So I think it, it, as you um, go and, and start you know, practicing using, um, uh, connecting to, with DBI and using ODBC and using DeepLayer, that um, there's definitely techniques that we're going to be expanding our, our, our the articles on db.rsu.com to cover this kind of thing. So once you start getting uh, having those needs of doing something like uh, recursive, uh, sending recursive uh, SQL statements, how we can do that more economically against the database. Another cool thing, and I'm glad this one's not flickering, is that the universe is expanding. Um, I uh, did a, a quick analysis of uh, CRAM packages as far as uh, all the packages that depend on DBI or DBplyr, and also that said something about database or query inside the title or description, and ended up finding 61 packages. Uh, 61 packages that essentially it gives us more functionality than the, the functionality I'm talking about today um, that adds to more things that we can do with databases. So uh, we have things here like uh, the connections, uh, like for example, there are Postgres. Uh, we have uh, DB parser here. We have DB player teradata, so we have some uh, vendor specific ones. Oops, sorry. Okay. Uh, vendor specific ones, as well as, come back here, um, as well as ones that extend functionality such as uh, Teddy Predict and uh, DBplot, for example. Um, another thing I wanted to show is that we have, um, of those 61 packages, uh, I posted here like when were the last update done in CRAN, and I was surprised how basically at least more than half been updated since last year, and like this year, 87% has been updated since 2017. I don't know if you have had the, the same situation as I have, that uh, you go and you find like a group of packages that you really like, or a package, and you find out the last time it was updated was like 2001. So you're like, oh, it may not work out for me. So this is, I'm very excited about that too. So let's do a quick demo. Um, I wanna show some te uh, techniques for connecting, exploring, visualizing uh, uh, data that we're going to have in a database. Um, we're going to use uh, several packages I have listed here, uh, such as uh, DeepLayer, as we talked about. We're going to use Leaflet, uh, and also a little bit of Per and Rlang. Uh, the data is, uh, I figured that since we're in Austin, and uh, we could use Austin Open Data, we're going to do that. So it's uh, uh, data that's uh, available uh, on BigQuery uh, that uh, shows where uh, different 311 calls, so you have 911 calls that are for emergency police, uh, 311 is like the non-emergency police. And, and we'll look at this data here. So let me switch over to the demo. So, I'm gonna do this. Here. Hopefully, it's a little bit more legible that way. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to uh, BigQuery. Uh, and I'm very excited about this one because um, it, it's data that's, again, it's public. Uh, usually, my. my um, shoot, sorry. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I was trying to sweat a little bit. Um, 
Uh, usually data that I demo is data that I have like in my laptop on a SQL server or stuff like that. So this one is something that uh, once you have the code, you can try it out yourselves. Um, so we're going to do a pointer to the 311 services. And we're going to use glimpse. So this is deep layer command that's running inside the database and bringing back essentially the same information that you would, would as, if, uh, as if it was local, uh, but it's obviously not, not in my laptop. So I'm getting uh, all the information here. You can see we have uh, the complaint descriptions, right? Uh, we have dead birds, uh, loose dogs, uh, animal service uh, stuff. Um, also, when when it was open, when it was closed, and most uh, importantly, because it's going to be the, what we're going to do today, it's uh, geocoded. So we're going to look at the longitude latitude of it. Um, to take a look real quick, uh, see how big this data is. Um, it's not huge, right? Uh, it's 640,000 records, uh, but I, again, I'm, I don't have any of that in my laptop. Everything is running against uh, uh, the, the BigQuery uh, table. Here, I want to see the, the top 10 uh, most used um, uh, complaint description. Uh, you'll notice that it's running against BigQuery and it's telling me how many records it's bringing back. So it's only bringing back 10 records. So that's all that it went back and forth, the internet and me right now. And I'm analyzing 600,000 records live here, right? And it's, uh, immediately I can see the, the top 10 with no problems. So uh, that is like the coolest thing ever, right? Because I'm using our markdown here to uh, publish all this information, uh, all this analysis without having to preload all this data. I'm going to do some data cleanup real quick because some uh, records weren't properly geocoded, so I'm doing that. Uh, so the first one is I'm going to do, I'm going to take just the loose dog complaints and see uh, where they are located, right? So I'm going to run this. I'm going to use dbplot. So instead of doing a, uh, um, a dot plot, I'm going to do uh, a raster plot so I don't have to bring back, you know, have already, I think it's 41,000 records back to uh, R and then have a bunch of dots that are going to be hard for me to, to, to see where they are. Um, rather, we can do a raster, so it's a lot less uh, results. But as you can see here, this doesn't say anything, right? Because we have no frame of reference here where these dots are located in real life. So what we'll do is we'll use a uh, function called DB Compute Raster that dbplot has. Uh, and what that does is that it will run the same calculations that we did for the raster, but instead of giving me a ggplot um, object, it's giving me a, um, a data frame, right, a table. And what's cool is that, again, I just, every time, I'm just calculating against the, uh, the database, and I'm only bringing back 484 rows instead of the 41,000 rows, right? So it's all that is pre-calculated. Um, I want to, since I'm going to use leaflet, I'm, I want to draw the, um, the squares. As you can see here, I can't draw a square just with the two uh, points of reference here, so I'm just going to create a quick function. As you can see, I'm using rlang to, to do that. So uh, you don't need to, you know, have to create a huge package to start learning tidy eval. It's tidy eval is your friend. Trust me, um, uh, you're welcome to try it, and you, you start getting a lot of uh, quick functionality for yourself. Uh, I'm going to run the locations uh, against uh, the new um, function, and something before I forget about this function. So I, what's neat about it is that I can do locations and then pipe it directly into my a new tidy eval function and say size, and now I have my autocomplete function that works, right? So I can start typing latitude, and it works, just like a, if you were creating your own tidy function. So it makes it where it's easily pipeable for you. So that's one of the big advantages that you gain by using that. So, uh, and then we're gonna create our squares. Now you can see that we have, we went from just one for each longitude and latitude, now we have the, the squares themselves uh, that I can draw. Next, I'm going to actually use leaflet to see where they are. So much easier. You can see it here. Uh, but again, 
now we know where they are, but we don't know, okay, where's the concentration of uh, loose dogs calls? All right, so what we'll do is that we're gonna, uh, the dbplot uh, db function will return the number of uh, records concentrated in that, uh, in that square. So what we'll do is like, we're gonna make the, the number, the max number of calls, the, the, the more, the redder of the, of the squares, and the less number of calls, the lighter red. So it'll make it uh, visually easier to, uh, to see where the calls are, right? So we're making it fancy now. And on top of that, we also added some uh, pop-ups. So I can click on and here and see that there's uh, uh, 1,200 calls uh, in this section of Austin, it's 128. You see it's a lot easier to, to navigate. So like this section is so red that I can't even see what area is in, in the map, but uh, very cool that now I'm able to do this analysis again against the database. I, don't, I haven't brought anything. So let's make it even fancier and get, uh, add the, the dot where we are, right? So this is where we're at right now. Hopefully Google Maps gave me the right geolocation. So if you're a local and I'm not 100% correct, please don't blame me. All right, so we see here where, where we are and where the concentration is. Uh, so we feel safe now that we don't, we're not gonna get um, uh, to see too many loose dogs apparently. Uh, so uh, that's gonna work out great. All right, so, shoot, it didn't want me to do this. Good, okay. Got five minutes, I'm gonna run through this real quick. Um, with ModelDB, which is a, a new package that it's been since 2018, uh, you can actually run some models inside the database. Uh, one of them is k-means, so let me switch here. Uh, what it's doing right now, it's um, taking all the, the longitude latitude and it goes through its iteration and see if the, the average is less than the previous run. So basically what k-means done in R, but is doing it against the database. It's running SQL statements until it finds one that's optimal to uh, the calculation. So in this case, it's gonna run, I think, 17 cycles, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll be able to see it here. Um, so this should be the last one. So now I have um, what it considers an optimal uh, center for each of them, and it gives me three centers. That's the default. And uh, you can see the, the actual SQL statement, and you'll see the, the numbers here of the calculations. So um, let me run this quickly. Now I can place the, the squares of my uh, three segments against, um, uh, against the map. And again, I'm going back and forth with the database. I am overlaying where my squares are. Um, and then this last one, hopefully I have enough time. This, this is the one that takes a little bit longer because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using a per command to, get, to, do DB, um, uh, to calculate the raster for each of the centers, give them a different color, and then you can see each color uh, where the, uh, each center, where the calls are, right? So everything I did, I just did against the database and I'm able to have all my results in R and all the computation and the modeling and the rest of the plot were done remotely. So this is the kind of thing that we want to continue on building up on and obviously even improve the, 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 the cancer translations we have today. So, good, all right, women, thank you. <laughs>